There's more to Webtoon layout than just stacking boxes. What you ask? Come with me and then you'll see. Hey, Walter here, and we are working on the layout portion of our how to make a webtoon from start to finish, where we go from nothing to awesome in the blink of an eye. If that blink took several hours. Now layout, we probably did some of that in the thumbnailing phase, but we did our episode in five different files. So now it's time to merge them all together. And yes, we could upload each of the files separately, but what we want to do is merge them all together, make it as seamless as possible for the reader. If you're new to the Webtoon format or come from a traditional background, the endless vertical landscape is going to take some getting used to. I know when I started, I felt a, a little bit trapped, but also had too much freedom. And that's because the, the format is going to feel too thin but also be too long. And the easiest way to tackle this is to think about it as a panel only, but at the same time, thinking about the entire episode in the back of your head, but just focus on that one panel that you're working on and make sure that looks good. And then you can move on to the next one. There's also different pacing and momentum techniques with Webtoon, like you can have bigger panels and smaller panels. You can change the distance between them and they're all going to do different things depending on what is inside the panel, the basis of what's going on in the story at that moment. So you have to play around, look at other comics, study what they're doing and what feelings those give you. Like big panels can have a huge action impact. They can also slow the reader down. Smaller panels are going to make characters feel small. It's also going to speed up time if you put panels closer together. That's gonna be like a bunch of action next to each other. If you space them further apart, that's gonna slow things down or even give you a chance to change a location or change a scene. So there's a bunch of different stuff you can do, play around with it, go with your gut. There's no hard rules here and other people are gonna read certain things differently. So just go with your gut and do what you like. Also, you can just straight up stack panels. That is perfectly fine, nothing wrong with that. The reader will still be able to enjoy your story. They'll still be able to enjoy your comic. So you don't have to do all of this crazy stuff. Stacking them is perfectly fine. It's all right to do it that way. So I'm curious though, when you're doing your webtoon, do you think about all of this pacing and distancing and all that stuff? Or do you just simply stack your comic? And if you do simply stack your comic, is that because you don't have the time, you don't have the knowledge, or you just think it doesn't really make that much of a difference? No judgment here. I'm just curious. I'd like to know. So let me know in the comments below, but let's go ahead and lay out our comic. All right. So here are our five files for our episode of Joe versus Syndra. And if you remember, our files are 900 by 4,500 pixels wide. So we're going to stick with that for our merged files. We're going to go 900 wide, but it needs to be wider than that. Let's start with 30,000 because that is a limitation of JPEG files. Not that we're saving in JPEG, but just as a place to start, 30,000 works. So now we go to our first file and we wanna select the entire thing and then select all of the layers. Now, depending on what program you're working in, you won't have to do it this way, but for Clip Studio, that's how you do it. You paste it into our new long file and then select all of the layers again and group them. You can either right click on the layers um, and then do create folder and insert layers. I created a shortcut that will group layers using control G. So what we wanna do is do this for every single file, select all, select all the layers, paste it, and then group all the layers. The reason we're grouping the layers is it's gonna make it easier on us to figure out which folder belongs to which set of images. In Photoshop, I wouldn't do it this way because Photoshop, I can just copy merged um, and then I'll just be a single layer. But with Clip Studio, you have to paste it and it pastes all of the layers. Now this is actually kind of cool. Once I got used to it, separating it into these different folders really makes it easy to work with. Now when you copy in each file, you wanna leave a little bit of white space between each of the different folders. And the reason we do this is so that we can quickly identify that we are now onto a new folder so that we know we need to move to that different folder. 
So once we have it copied in, we can close the other files because we're just gonna work on this one single file. So the first thing to do is go to the very top and then work our way down. So when I did the thumbnails, I kind of built in this artwork to make it scroll, but let's say we wanted an extra amount of scroll. We simply move down that folder and then we add a layer on top of that folder so that we can create additional artwork to help expand that. So here I'm just gonna take the brush tool and fill in the colors moving up. Now it won't be super perfect, so that's why I did a gradient to help kind of blend it in and trick the reader to not really pay too much attention to that seam. So we're good to go, we move on to the next folder and basically we're just gonna move that set of images up to touch the first set of images. And then we look at the seam here, make sure the seam looks okay. It's not bad, but I can kind of see that there's an imaginary line there. So I'm going to add another layer on top of our second folder and start adding some artwork in there to kind of make it blend in better. Now, if you're only stacking boxes, this would definitely speed up the process because it would just be empty white space here and you wouldn't have to worry about all this additional work. But for me, I think it's worth it to make this kind of seamless long image that will really draw the reader in. It's, it's one of the strong things about Webtoon. So here you can see, I kind of thought that that lettering was in the wrong spot once I put the artwork together. So I just moved it. And that's the nice thing about Clip Studio is that you do have all of those layers versus like how I would do it in Photoshop. It would be a merged image. So I would have to go back to the original file, tweak it there and then pull it in. Okay, so the seam here, is not very smooth. So I am gonna have to add a panel border here to help the reader understand that the image is changing. If I didn't do that, there could be confusion uh, of where a panel ended and where another panel started. The other option would be kind of try to have a smooth gradient out of the Syndra panel and then fade that into the empty blue space, which is an option. I didn't feel like taking the time to do that right now but that would be a way to do it. It just didn't seem like it was worth the effort here. Now, I also thought there was too much space between these two panels, so I had to move the entire folder up, and here I'm just gonna select the extra and delete it. Then we just rinse and repeat, do that for all of them, I'm moving the seams together again. It's not a super smooth transition, so I'm just gonna do a little bit here to make it kind of fit together and not seem like I just stuck two images together. And then at the end, I wanna do kind of a smooth transition out where I can add the logo and the credits. Uh, when you are doing gradients like this, make sure you make a selection for your gradient. If you don't do that, and then you do a gradient, it's gonna fill everything above where you would want the box to be with that color. So you just do a simple marquee and then you can do a gradient in there. And now I'm just kind of fading in the stars into our gradient just to make it seem like it was all intentional that it was there to begin with. Now there's some weird things, I don't know why this happens, but if you zoom all the way out of a large image, sometimes you'll start seeing like empty white space that isn't really there. I don't know why this happens. So just zoom in and make sure that it's really not there. And if it's not, you can ignore what it looks like when you zoom out. So basically once you're done, zoom all the way out, in Clip Studio, just make a marquee selection of where you want it to stop, and then go to edit, and then crop it. Now I'm gonna add a simple logo in credit section here at the bottom. This would be something that I would have put in my resources file or saved off to another file, so that I'd be easy to just copy and paste that into this file. I wouldn't have to type this every single time. But since this is the first one, this is my first time doing it. Okay, so that's it, that's our merge file. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is take this and split it into multiple images so that we can upload it per the restrictions of Webtoon, which is 800 pixels wide by 1280 pixels tall, I believe. Now, the easiest way I've found to do this is by using a website called Croppy. Make sure you save the file. I usually save it with the exact same episode name, but I just put underscore full or underscore Webtoon, just to make it clear that that is the entire file that we're gonna send off to Webtoon. Croppy can use a few different files, TIFF, PNG. The cool part is that it can just use a straight Photoshop file, which is really nice if you're working in Photoshop. So with Croppy, just go choose a file, go to where your file is and just upload it. It's gonna take a few seconds to analyze, to cut up your image, and then when it's done, you'll see it display 
and then it's gonna download a file. So there it is. You can look through it on the website to make sure everything looks good. So I just go into the folder where it is. It's a zip file, so you wanna copy all of these images and then paste it into your correct folder where all your other files are. And you can see here, each of those individual images are cut from our huge full file. And you can see where the cut is happening. It's in the middle of artwork, but that doesn't really matter because when it gets uploaded to Webtoon, it's just gonna stick those images butt to butt so that there won't be any gaps. And you can see Crappie shrunk the images to 800 pixels wide by 1,000 pixels wide. So it took our 900 by 25,000 file and made a bunch of 800 by 1,000 files that we can upload to Webtoon. There you go, pretty straightforward. Now, if we did our job right, we did a lot of this in the thumbnailing and coloring phases. So when we merged them, we just had to do a little bit of cleanup. Now make sure you sub to catch the last video in the series, which is going to be the creation and the uploading of the comic. Super simple video, but I am going to cover a few other points that I don't think are immediately obvious, but if you do them, it's gonna help the engagement of your comic. Now, if you wanna support making these videos, check out my store or support me on Patreon or just share this video with your great uncle and tell him to like, link, love, hug, and sub for more sweet, sweet goodness. Peace.